Staying UFC champion forever is impossible, even if you're the GOAT. The agony in these humbled legends' faces says it all and regain their form. In this video, we'll talk about the shocking moments when MMA's all-time greatest champions were toppled from their thrones and stripped of the glory they worked years to attain. Coming into this fight, double champion Amanda Nunes was a massive favorite, tire out swinging for an early finish. As Nunes faded, Pena turned the fight into a gritty brawl where she began tagging the champion. Stunning Nunes with combinations, Pena took the action to the mat before cinching up a tight blue bantamweight ruler, proving every reign must come to an end. It was a battle for the ages when 43-year-old legend Randy Couture emerged from a brief retirement to challenge hulking 6'8 champion Tim Sylvia. Sylvia looked invulnerable during his heavyweight reign, having just smashed Andre Arlovsky twice. He dwarfed Couture in height, reach, and 30 pounds. Sylvia closed as high as a minus 760 favorite, with Captain America a 550 plus underdog to capture a title in his fourth UFC division. But Couture turned back the clock with relentless dirty boxing attacks, crushing Sylvia's body and staggering him with huge right hands in round one. He continued overwhelming the behemoth Sylvia against the fence with savage combinations before coasting the final frames. In trademark underdog fashion, the aging Couture out-hustled his younger, larger foe to reclaim heavyweight hardware in a landslide decision victory for his record third heavyweight championship. When Dominic Cruz withdrew from his UFC 173 bout against dominant bantamweight ruler Henan Barrow, Team Alpha Male's TJ Dillashaw seized the late replacement spot, sporting plus 715 odds. Barrow entered, riding an otherworldly 33 straight wins overall with 9 UFC victories. The Brazilian phenom hadn't lost in over 9 years since 2005, earning pound for pound recognition during a staggering 15 month title defense streak. But Dillashaw implemented feints and footwork to find angles on Barrow, cracking the seemingly unsolvable champion with straight punches. The challenger outclassed Barrow for a wide decision before brutally dispatching an intimidating Barrow via fifth round TKO flurries to capture unexpected gold. TJ Dillashaw on the new UFC Bantamweight Champion! Anthony Pettis captured the lightweight belt in electrifying performances punctuated by his gravity-defying showtime kick off the cage. A creative, dynamic striker, Pettis seemed physically suited to reign atop the 155 ranks as a sizable minus 350 favorite over Rafael Dos Anjos' grappling pressure at UFC 185. However, RDA exhibited the foundation and technique to unravel Pettis' sorcery. The underrated challenger implemented offensive wrestling to control exchanges and cape positioning. On the feet, rangy leg kicks offset Pettis' rhythm as RDA out-hustled the champion overall for a unanimous decision. In tactical domination, RDA announced himself as a divisional leader, deposing the dynamic Pettis in a comprehensive fashion few predicted possible pre-fight. Rowdy pioneered women's MMA into mainstream consciousness, becoming a global icon of the UFC's first female champion. Rousey flowed between judo trips and her signature armbar, finishing all 12 previous opponents in Strike Force and the UFC, usually inside one round. So the woman's bantamweight queen closed an astronomical minus 2,250 favorite against undefeated boxer Holly Holm for UFC 193 in Australia. With Rousey seeming invincible as arguably the planet's most popular combatant, the Melbourne Super event set records with over 56,000 spectators anticipating Rousey's dominance. However, technical striker Holm exhibited the footwork and fundamentals needed to solve the Rousey riddle. She punished the aggressive champion who was charging straight into counters before uncorking a head kick that stiffened and shocked Rousey permanently in round two. In once-in-a-lifetime upset fashion, Holm martially checkmated the Empress herself, heralding a new bantamweight era amidst unbelieving pandemonium. After Matt Serra won Season 4 of The Ultimate Fighter, the UFC granted the welterweight long shot an improbable title shot against indomitable champion George St. Pierre despite plus 1,100 underdog odds at UFC 69. Owning eight straight wins, Rush St. Pierre entered his physical prime, having avenged his only career loss dominantly against Matt Hughes. But Sarah shocked Canada by clipping GSP early before battering the staggered champion along the fence at the Bell Center for a cataclysmic first-round TKO.
Overnight career journeyman Sarah assumed welterweight glory in what remains the greatest betting upset in UFC championship history. St. Pierre never previously flashed vulnerability until Sarah's Cinderella haymakers created a new king. The undisputed middleweight goat Anderson Silva constructed a mythical aura during an unparalleled 10-fight championship defense streak spanning 2,457 days. The Spider accrued 17 straight UFC victories, often taunting foes with otherworldly reflexes and showmanship. By 2013, pound-for-pound -pound wizard Silva seemed simply invincible at minus 225 odds, facing still green Chris Weidman's undefeated 9-0 record. But Weidman forced exchanges early, landing left hooks before perfectly baiting Silva into his signature backaway. Weidman punctured the matrix with a heat-seeking left, Following up strikes on the folded Silva for a cataclysmic round one TKO, scarcely anyone predicted pre-fight. Anderson. Oh my, he got hit! Look at the finish it! Hit it's all over! In an instant, all Americans shook the foundations of greatness, snatching Silva's belt to install a new middleweight king with spectacular flair. Bantamweight boss TJ Dillashaw saw greatness when he moved down to 125 pounds, attempting to snap fast-rising flyweight champion Henry Cejudo's momentum. With consecutive KOs over MMA legend Dominic Cruz, Dillashaw's standout speed in boxing represented stiff minus 600 odds for Olympic gold medalist Cejudo. But Cejudo quickly initiated thudding leg kicks to chop down Dillashaw before sealing his first title defense in sensational gripping fashion in under a minute. Cejudo confirmed his pound-for-pound -pound power at flyweight while Dillashaw's dreams of two-division dominance evaporated via savage TKO in a contender for the most unexpectedly spectacular title fight finish ever. Joanna Jan Jacek cemented herself as strawweight divisional queen with four consecutive championship wins on the heels of a 14-fight streak spanning nine years. The Polish Muay Thai destroyer brutalized contenders with ruthless volume and power, shattering faces en route to a 75% finishing rate. As a massive minus 1,650 favorite, oddmakers held little faith that submission-aced Rose Namajunas could solve the 111-pound puzzle. But Thug Rose short-circuited Jan Jacek with shocking first-round ferocity. She collapsed the intimidating champion with a right hand before adding ground strikes for a lightning TKO scarcely anyone conceived possible pre-fight at Madison Square Garden. Well, Rose... Oh! Another knockdown! Rose Namajunas is trying to close the show! She was doing a great job of feeding that is it! Nama Yunus instantly crowned herself as UFC's new leading lady, vanquishing the formerly invulnerable boogie woman herself amidst deafening pandemonium. When Chris Weidman withdrew three weeks before his UFC 199 rematch against dominant middleweight ruler Luke Rockhold, Michael Bisping received his first title opportunity since 2006 with the company. But after Rockhold submitted Bisping years earlier, the British veteran drew comparably minuscule plus 750 underdog odds to reverse their rivalry on short notice. Nonetheless, Hail Mary's right hands altered fates in rounds 1 and 3 as Rockhold suspiciously underestimated his arch nemesis. Bisping rendered Rockhold unconscious, capturing long-pursued gold after over a decade as a perennial contender to author MMA's most emotionally satisfying career redemption. To regain the welterweight throne lost via round 1 TKO to monumental plus 1100 underdog Matt Serra, George St. Pierre made adjustments for the rematch at UFC 83. As a sizable favorite, the French-Canadian aimed to restore natural order after the original upset rocked the foundations of St. Pierre's aura of greatness everyone previously assumed untouchable. Serra rocked GSP early again, but the former champion stayed composed, using activity and grappling control to narrowly reclaim the belt. 
However, Sarah validated his seismic power once more, concussing GSP badly and exposing holes in Rush's stand-up, which the challenger had never repaired before retirement. Although St. Pierre won, his struggles reinforced his humanity, permanently realigning career perceptions for the formerly invulnerable all-timer towards more risk and adversity moving forward. That's all for today. If you enjoyed today's video, hit that like button, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so yet. Make sure to press the notification bell to be the first to our next video. Till then, see ya!